Hi all, I'm here to tell you about TensorFlow datasets. It's a new way to have a collection of public research datasets. Uh, it's on GitHub and PyPy, and it's ready to use with TensorFlow. First, a little bit of setup. Of course, this is the partnership that we all care about, data and models. And TensorFlow 2 makes it look really nice. You set up your model, your optimizer, iterate through your training data. You get predictions, your loss, gradients, update. It all looks fantastic. And they're good together, data and models. And really, I just want to focus in on this one piece, this one line, iterating through your training data set. In TF2, with the TF Data API, you have this really expressive, simple way of expressing high performance uh, but flexible input pipelines. So we might start with some TF data set. And we can map and shuffle and batch and repeat, build really complex pipelines, uh, and we know that this will be really performant. So this map call, for example, might be doing some complex image preprocessing on each record in the data set. And it's happening in parallel. You can see here num parallel calls equals 10. So TensorFlow will be spinning up a bunch of threads so that this mapping is really high performance. And at the end, you also have this ability to prefetch. So as your tight model training loop is going, you can actually be preparing batches ready to feed into the next iteration. Now, this is fantastic, but unfortunately, the source data is a little bit out of step. And so what we want is we want this amazing, you know, tight iteration, you know, four inputs and targets in train data set. Uh, but of course, what's hidden from there is how did you get the data into a format that you can actually feed into your model in the first place? Every single source you know, data set, whether it's MNIST or IMDB sentiment classification, you know, the IMDB reviews data set, it's all a little bit different. And of course, this makes perfect sense. When you're distributing data at rest, there's some natural format that you'd like to distribute it in. But we're not really interested in data at rest. We're interested in having data in a format that's sort of ready to move into a <clears throat> TF data pipeline. And what we really want is something that's, that's good together. We want these two pups, data and models, to, uh, to, to really be simpatico. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that TensorFlow Datasets is, is really just about this, this one piece of getting data into a format that's ready to move into a TF data, data pipeline. And so here's TensorFlow Datasets. Uh, you import TensorFlow Datasets. Uh, and this load API for MNIST, because that's our canonical first example always uh, and forever, I hope. Um, and we're grabbing the split uh, train, so the training split of the data set. Uh, we're asking for supervised tuples. So in this case, MNIST is a supervised data set. It has inputs and targets, and so we'll get inputs and target tuples. We get a TF data data set right back from the load call, and we can build a complex pipeline. In this case, we're adding some shuffling and some batching, and then we're off. Now we can iterate through our inputs and do all the modeling things that we need. And load actually hides a lot of uh, the complexity. And so what's happening here with load is that MNIST is actually being fetched from the source. It's being pre-processed. It's being put into a standard format. It's being documented uh, with statistics and everything, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, and then you're building uh, the sort of the front end. So you have pre-processed data on disk, ready to move. Typically, you'd only do this once. And of course, TFDS will cache all those results for you. Uh, and then you're getting a TF data pipeline out of it. And we don't just have MNIST. So ImageNet, uh, complex data set. Most places when you go look at the tutorial for how do I use ImageNet, first step is like, you know, run this bash script, uh, you know, muck with the files over here, make sure you filter out these, you know, records, things like that. Um, and of course, this is all taken care of for you. Now ImageNet uh, is uh, gated with a password and um, a username, and so uh, the currently TensorFlow datasets just asks you to download the data, put it in a certain place, and TensorFlow datasets takes it from there. And we're actually working on uh, with Kaggle to get ImageNet uh, able to be uh, auto downloaded just from uh, without having any user intervention uh, at all. Uh, we go beyond images, so we have text datasets. So in this case, we have IMDb reviews. Note, again, that the API doesn't change. This is just a tfds.load call to get a data set. So in this case, we'd be getting the plain text IMDB reviews data set. But of course, text is a notoriously difficult sort of format to work with. 
when you actually are interested in doing machine learning on it, you have to do encodings. And so we're actually shipping with three really powerful encodings. One is byte level, so you have character level encoding. Um, uh, and another is subwords. Uh, and so we have a really great subword text encoder that was originally developed in the tensor to tensor library. And so in this case, we'd be getting IMDB reviews already encoded into integers uh, using a subword vocabulary with about 8,000 uh, tokens. So each of these data sets is packaged together as a data set builder. So if you wanted to add a data set to TensorFlow data sets, which I hope every single one of you does, I, th I think there should be about 1,000 new data sets within a week. That's my, that's my, that's my hope. Um, so d data set builder is actually really simple. It does exactly those three things that load was sort of hiding. The first, it has a method called download and prepare, which takes source data out on the open web or on local directory and produces pre-processed files. So it takes data at rest and it puts it into a format that's data ready to move. The second is as data set. As data set takes those uh, pre-processed files on disk and produces a tf.data.data set. And the third is really useful information, metadata about the data set, um, which can be programmatically really useful. So uh, data set info is the documenting uh, object. So in this case, it has the features in the data set. And each of the features, you can see, documents the name, the shape, and the type. So in this case, the image for MNIST is 2828 28 by 1, 28 by 28 by 1, uh, type uint 8. The class labels, the number of classes is documented in the class label feature. You also get statistics on the data set itself. What are the splits that are actually exposed? In this case, train and test. And how many records are in each one? MNIST has 60,000 images in the training set. And 10,000 images in the testing set. For supervised tasks, you also get supervised keys. So if you wanted to be able to programmatically grab a data set from TensorFlow data sets and sort of filter for all the ones that are trivially supervised, uh, trivially supervised data sets, uh, you can look for supervised keys and pick out the, uh, the features that you need. And for text, uh, again, one of these things that's uh, a bit annoying to work with often, uh, so this is IMDB reviews, we see that it has a label feature and a text feature, and the text feature actually contains the encoder. Uh, we see here that it's a subword text encoder with a vocab size of 8,185. You get the same statistics for the splits. We also support NumPy usage. Now, this is TensorFlow Dev Summit, so maybe this isn't uh, you know, so useful, but we wanted to make TensorFlow datasets really portable. Um, and so you can actually just call this tfds.asNumPy, and it hides all the TensorFlow from you and you pass it a data set, it hands you back an iterator, a Python generator over NumPy arrays, which is great. So coming back to our initial example, uh, you know, we had this beautiful you know, model and data, um, but of course, train data set, where did this come from, and how did you actually get the data? Um, and with TensorFlow data sets, simple change, and you actually have something that uh, works end to end, out of the box, um, which is, something we're really happy about, and we hope you are too. Uh, you can come find us on PyPy, the TensorFlow website, uh, and GitHub. We have over 30 data sets already, and there's more being added every day. Uh, the community on GitHub has actually gotten surprisingly active surprisingly quickly, uh, so come join us. Um, we, uh, we absolutely could use your data. If you're distributing some data set and you'd like to make your data set famous, uh, please add it to TensorFlow data sets. It's a great way to make it accessible to a huge community. Um, and come help us on GitHub. There are data set requests. Uh, you can help implement uh, a data set that's been requested many times, uh, or help us you know, just develop. We develop fully out in the open. All of our you know, internal changes are actually external changes. We just develop uh, straight out on GitHub. Uh, so thanks very much. Um, hopefully uh, you guys find this useful, and uh, come help us out.